South Africa's unemployment rate has improved slightly from 32.6% to 31.9% in the third quarter of 2023. Six of the ten sectors of the economy gained jobs, while manufacturing, mining, transport and utilities lost jobs in the same period. Business reporter Ndogo Zokumalo is still unpacking the quarterly labor force survey out of Statistics South Africa today. Ndogozo, place yourself for us and tell us uh, the contribution of your next guest. Mm. Do do well. I am now out in Santon, um, having left the stats office in Pretoria, and I'm at SNG uh, Grand Thornton just to get an understanding of how those industries are working through um, the tough economic times, uh, whether they are seeing profitability in the near future and improved um, productivity to be able, of course, to not only keep jobs, but also create new jobs. And I am now joined by Grant Thornton's um, director and head of business of the business unit, and that's Omar Hassan. Thank you so much for talking to us. Now, as we just saw out of stats to say, six out of the 10 industries creating some jobs in the third quarter of the you're showing some improvements in unemployment. Talk us through the conversations that you are having with businesses, particularly on the back of the Business Pulse reports that you just released. What conversations are businesses having when it comes to just the jobs environment in South Africa and the skill shortage? Uh, thank you very much, Ntugozo. Um, of course, our Business Pulse survey focuses on the mid-market, which is looking at companies employing 50 to 500 employees. Um, the discussions we're having is almost look at where are we from a skills perspective. Uh, what we saw from, from the survey is about 50% or so we interviewed about 100 different senior executives across 100 mid-market companies. 50% are looking at saying that skills shortage is a concern. Uh, skill for workforce is a concern and a constraint in terms of the ability to execute. So the discussion we're having, of course, is where does that actually lie? How do we, as an economy in South Africa, look and harness and harvest the right skill sets to be able to grow our economy? Uh, from a mid-market perspective, there is positive because they're looking at investing. So 69% is looking at investing in skilled workforce. Uh, they're seeing this as a key, one, a constraint, but a key lever to move in order to actually get some profitability uh, and get some growth in the market itself. Mm. And where are those gaps, you know, that you are seeing when it comes to those skills? What industries are facing um, a lot more of that skill shortage, uh, no matter where they look um, in the country? Uh, talk us through that, but also where we are seeing perhaps, you know, younger graduates and so on coming in and also upskilling themselves as they wait for employment opportunities. Yeah, I mean, a great question. I think for me, where we're seeing certainly a skill shortage is in industries like technology, um, health, uh, finance. Um, specifically, we're seeing a technological age um, where we see, of course, countries in the West, etc., focusing and harnessing technology to grow efficiency. Uh, in South Africa, there's specialists when it comes to data scientists, whether they be engineers, whether they be developers, etc., as a key skill shortage. That supports us in a lot of companies looking at the focus on digitization and automation to enhance the efficiency in terms of how they operate. Also helps improve their cost to income ratio, helps to improve the way they serve customers, etc. Uh, those skills are critical to be able to, to move forward from that perspective. So we see that as an area of, of shortage. Uh, in the medical space as well, um, our stats have come out to say there's shortage in terms of medical doctors, medical nurses, uh, could be some leaving going abroad. Uh, and of course, we see that brain drain in the, company, in, in the country from that perspective. Another core element which is quite fundamental as we move on and start executing on our infrastructure projects is the shortage of engineers uh, and specialists in that space itself. Um, for us, what's come out in the data is it's another sector or, or subsector of skills that's, again, lacking uh, and an area where we've got to take concerted effort as leaders of businesses within uh, South Africa to look at how do we harness that, how do we grow it to help build our economy. Mm. And um, Omar, when we look at the reports as well, you can give us a little bit more detail around that. Over the next 18 months, some of those businesses, about 70% of them, expecting to see improved profitability, a changing environment and so on. So for people that are looking for either opportunities for employment or to upskill themselves, how do they go about that? 
Yeah, that's a, this is a really remarkable stat. I mean, even though we've got a number of economic constraints, uh, hearing what the minister said from a mid-term budget perspective, we can see constraints in the economy. However, is mid-market, 70%, 70 out of 100 are saying we still see profitability coming in. So they've looked at what the history has been and looked at how do they create buffers and still create revenue and create profit from that perspective. What's positive on that remark is if companies grow, they would need increased workforce and hopefully they organically they'll grow as an organization. So as they get more revenue, they start expanding, whether they be locally, offshore, etc. from that perspective. That then gives rise for youth that's come in in terms of this is a positive outlook. How do we then tap into and look at uh, attracting those jobs that are out there in the market? Uh, we then need to look at, and I, and I employ the youth to look at what are the skills that's in demand going forward. Look at what's the horizon in terms of what's company strategies and what they're focusing on, and upskilling yourself in that perspective. And the upskilling starts all the way from university level through to the workforce. I mean, we encourage uh, within our own company and other companies is making sure that you're looking at upskilling, relevant upskilling. So look at what's the skills needed for the future, uh, what's needed currently and how do you grow for the future and making sure you invest research into that there but also put your money behind it to be able to upskill your workforce. Mm. And just looking globally, the issue of skills um, and the skills migration, um, how do we then get those skills back and, you know, have more South Africans stay at home? Are there any indicators that are showing us to what could get South African skill to stay here at home and, uh, you know, pass on to the next generation entering the workforce? I would love to say just have the beauty of the country and come back and enjoy it. But... I mean, the truth is, uh, after COVID, we realized that this world is a small place. Uh, and it gave, it gave opportunity for many people to work, live locally and work abroad, or immigrate and actually work abroad. And there's a lot that's attracting them there in terms of salary, work-life balance maybe, uh, but opportunity for growth. For me, is we almost got to look at introspective and say, what is our current workforce environment set up like to be able to encourage employment from a youth perspective, looking at gender balance in, in the employment industry, and how do we promote growth and learning across the industry itself. And thirdly is looking at the dynamic work life, uh, a workforce that we need now. So it's shifted to your normal eight to five uh, office hours in terms of how you work. It's, it's dynamic in terms of it's output driven, People are working maybe more than one job at a time. We've got to start catering for that there and look at what's the, the newer generations coming in in terms of what's the outlook, what, does, what drives them, how do we get better productivity around them from that perspective and focus that and harness it. And making your workforce very conducive, so rewarding appropriately um, and making sure you have the practices from agility and a dynamic workforce perspective to be able to retrain them and attract them. Second to that, there is taking on the big projects. Um, as a country, there's a number of economical projects as well as infrastructural projects that we're gonna, we need to undertake to help revive our economy. The effective execution of that there in the public and the private sector will start drawing the relevant skills coming in uh, and start retaining it from that perspective. My last point on that there is we need to be very deliberate when we look at skills development. It's not saying take every single one and, th and put them onto a specific course. Is what is the company that's almost introspective to say, where are we going? Is it a data journey we're going on? Is it a digital journey, et cetera? And then train and upskill accordingly. And I guess our leaders need to skill up as well. So it doesn't mean you never, and you never stop learning. I mean, it's an area where you've got to continue to uh, learn and upskill yourself. Absolutely. And everyone, I suppose, in the economy really continuously learning. Omar, before I let you go, just talk us through perhaps if there's any trends that your Business Pulse survey um, points to, because we've now reached 16.7 uh, million South Africans employed, mm -hmm. surpassing, you know, those pre-COVID uh, levels when we did see um, jobs being shared. What kind of trends over the years does the survey kind of show when it comes to the business environment and the skills environment in the country? Yes, yeah, so I think um, it's positive to see that, of course, we, we're moving in, in the right directory from an employment perspective, right? Uh, however, we monitor a number of things in terms of what's the optimism of business in the country. Uh, and we look on year and year and year. And that touches on a number of levers. It's, it's almost like how many markets do organize, uh, the mid-market look at uh, operating in? What's the level of exports? What's the level of revenue growth, et cetera? And 
that lever for me is a deteriorating lever. And the reason for that is there's a number of economical constraints that are impacting that. And we've almost got to focus in terms of, from an energy perspective, from a, uh, a logistics perspective, et cetera, how do we make the workforce, a working environment more conducive to be able to grow and expand organically from that perspective? From there, when it comes to skill set, we monitor, um, of course, the organization's willingness and forecast to in increase the workforce, number one, as well as their willingness to look at how do we invest in skills and capacity. Two levers there. The one lever in terms of increased workforce comes together with organic growth. As you look at it as digitization and efficiency, you may see shrinking of organizations and expanding other components. We Which see we're that. seeing in manufacturing we're happening that. already. 100%. But to the inverse of, converse of that, that, we see organizations identifying that we need to skill up. We need to look for the right skill. And they're starting to invest and put money in that there. And that's an upward trend, which for me is positive, aligns to what's come out today mm -hmm. in a positive outlook to say, how do we take and grab onto the, to the positives and start building this, this economy? Mm -hmm. Let's look at we, unemployment's coming down. People, businesses are focused on building skills. Let's put the money in the right buckets and start moving forward. Mm. Yeah. Oma, thank you so much for talking to us. Of course, Dudu, that's uh, SNG Grant Thornton's uh, director and head of uh, business unit consulting. That's Oma Hassan, just giving us some details around the skills uh, shortage concern in the country and what can be done for us to see an improvement in that area. It's back to you in studio, Dudu. Thank you very much, Ndogozo Kumalo.